Hi, I'm Matt from Hoboken Horology, and I'm really excited to show off my new Speedmaster Man on the Moon bracelet that I bought its period appropriate. And I basically bought this um, a couple weeks ago, and I put it in my desk shelf, and I haven't touched it until I had time to, you know, bring out the camera and make a video. So this is my first unboxing. <laughs> So here is the strap uh, you just saw. I'm very excited to open it. So here we go. Wow. I'm trying to look at it outside of the uh, camera and just look at it in my hands. It's fantastic to see the quality of this piece. The only thing is, there's a little bit of dirt and grime, and that's going to be expected. There's a few light scratches, and there's very there's a lot of micro scratching all through it. Now I'm a bit puzzled as to if I can polish this or not. I'm not sure how it'll take. If it's a very very light polish, it might take. It actually probably looks it looks quite quite good on camera. You can see the scratches right when I reflect it, just like this. But you know, if you're wearing it, especially at a distance, let's take the speedy off. If we're wearing it, especially at a distance, um, this is gonna look very nice. And if we look on the back, we can see that it is in fact authentic. It's actually, camera is having a bit of a problem picking up on that. But if you want me to send some stills, I can. It says uh, JB Champion, JB Champion Stainless Steel. So if it is stainless steel, I'm sure I wouldn't have a problem polishing this. Now, let's unlatch this if I can. Oh, that's right. There's a little release button right here. I don't want to force anything. So let's try this again. We are going to unlatch. It's amazing how stiff that is and how that's on there after so long. Now, what I have done is I've whittled this into a small point so that I can stick this underneath. And unlatch it. Wow, that was a very strong little stainless steel latch. Now, this really should only be done once when you buy something this old. You can see the corrosion and the um, dust and maybe old skin cells underneath there. Um, but again, you should only really do this once. Okay, now you can see that I'm wearing it. It's a little tight when I um, flex my wrist, so I'm gonna loosen it by one placement, and I wanted to show you guys this. First impressions, like I gotta say, <laughs> I was a little concerned. I couldn't, uh, <laughs> I couldn't take it off. It was kind of scaring, uh, scaring me there for a minute. But uh, once I depress this and give it a little wiggle, a little difficult to do on camera. I know where all these scratches are coming from on the inside. When you have to take it on and off, um, this is constantly scratching against itself, um, and this great mesh. Um, here, this mesh pattern is uh, feels so nice. I mean, it's such a small mesh. You're probably seeing some strange uh, distortion on the camera, um, but this mesh is so comfortable. I gotta say, this thing is extremely comfortable. It did not seem it. And just look at the tiny lugs, like the tiny, the, the, the one millimeter, that makes a difference. Like you can tell when you look at it that it doesn't, it's not, it's not right. It's not a proper band for this watch. But this is exactly the kind of look that you want for your vintage piece. This watch is early 70s, and this band is from around that time period also. Um, let's try using our 
peg wood here. It's not really peg wood. It's a, it's a chopstick. I but I did uh, whittle this down real quick. You want to use wood because it won't scratch the uh, the steel. So let's just move that down by one link. And it's funny once I I broke the the um, ring of crust that was around it the first time. Now it's quite easy to to flip this on and off to change. And once it's locked in, it's in this groove. These grooves. As you can see, there's um, dozens of grooves, so it can go to literally any um, wrist. It can fit on any wrist. The only thing you have to worry about is if you buy the counter, the other, um, the, the mesh, the one that is known for by astronauts, the one that's known for astronauts wearing, if you break this little, this little latch here, if you pull it too hard and you're not um, jamming, if you're not See, I'm applying pressure underneath to allow it to allow it to kind of, using this as a lever to kind of push it up. That's why the steel is, is flared up here. So you could use a tool to go underneath. If you pull it in the wrong way or you pull too hard or it's too corroded, this little piece breaks, your whole band is gone. Now that's not a huge deal for, for my purchase, but it would be if you spent a thousand dollars on the NASA mesh one. We'll go into prices in a little bit. I definitely want to do some breakdowns of pricing and what I paid exactly. Um, bracelet is really incredible. I mean, the polish is still there, but basically from what I paid for this bracelet was around a little under a hundred bucks. So for a little under a hundred, it really brings the Speedmaster back into its vintage roots. It's such a cool piece and it's a great addition for my Speedy. And I've been wearing it on a NATO for a while, which feels great. I have a leather NATO that's incredible I have to make a video about. But on this strap, it feels at home. And to know that it's possible an, an astronaut wore it with this bracelet, um, it, it just brings me back to the reason I wanted a Speedmaster in the first place. And one of the reasons I even got into horology was because of the uh, Omega Speedmaster. So that being said, uh, I can't say how much I like it. I, it's, it's, so, it's so cool. And, you know, because I didn't pay a premium price for it, um, it's even more exciting. It does have some of the wear already on it. So I don't really have to worry about babying it. And that's one of the whole reasons I bought it was because I, I want to wear a bracelet and not have to worry about scratching up the original or damaging the original and getting all of these desk diving marks on the original uh, bracelet. You know, when, when I bought this, I, it hurt me to take the bracelet off, but I did. And I put this one on now uh, after wearing it on a NATO for about a month. So uh, let me go into the history on this bracelet a little bit from... Here's Moonwatch only, and they go through the history of the JB Champion uh, bracelet. I'm so excited to be actually wearing it as I go through this. It's so, so unique. It's such a unique experience because I've been very excited to have this. Um, so here are the traditional ones. These ones are the mesh, and as you can see, the end links are different. These are straight. Here's a little curved. Here's another straight one. This one is one of the most popular that I know of. Width of end pieces uh, 16 to 19. Of course, 19 being the uh, popular one, if it's the Speedy. It's not 20, as if the Speedy is, but 19 millimeters will give you that great little um, half millimeter on each side that sticks out. 16, be careful. If you're buying a 16 millimeter um, end, you might not realize it. So the models worn by astronauts, JB Champion, Ah, this is the one worn by astronauts. Maybe I'm mistaken. Oh, okay, so this is the KF4, and then they're saying this is the one worn by astronauts. As you can tell, they, they do wear it a little loose, and also it, it kind of gives that appearance, but I think most people wear their watches a little bit looser than I do. So if we go down the list a little bit more, and there's one in gold. That's a little strange. Mine is under a variant. Here's a Type JB7 um, variant of the mesh. Um, so instead we have, uh, steel strips, sixteen ninety five. Okay. I paid a little under a hundred dollars for mine. 
And I think that's pretty good for used quality because mine is fairly used. And I didn't have the packaging, which really doesn't mean anything to me because it's this like plastic, but mine says exactly that on the back. And um, if we go up to this picture, here's one from 2010 that was selling. And they offer a little bit of uh, history. Um, Sliding clasp uh, band known as the NASA band because of its similarity to one of the astronauts wore on the Speedmaster in space. This one's really interesting. This is really cool. They're saying it's six, 17, 17 and a half, 18 and 19 sizes. But uh, really interesting. And it's funny as I'm looking at mine now, as I'm recording this, I have the same emblem right on the side of mine, just like this one. Here's another one for 225 online. This is in little packaging here. These ones, you know, you were paying for immaculate quality. And like here you go. Here's one for 550. Um if you buy this, you are not going to be wearing this out like I am. I'm going to be beating mine up. If you buy something this nice and you're you're going to pay the premium, you're going to pay $300 for this, you're going to do you're going to do well. Um, if you put it on the Speedmaster and you're wearing it out to dinner or you're wearing it to somewhere where it'll be appreciated. But if you're like me and you're very active and when you work, you might move around or end up banging your wrist here and there, which, you know, is hard. And, you know, when you're, you know, trying to preserve your, your piece, your watch, um, you know, it's I don't know if I would spend three hundred dollars on a band or a bracelet that originally cost sixteen ninety five and um you know the first thing i do is go out and scratch it up that's i i don't know if i if i could do that um but you know i i got mine for 100 and mine's used it's not like these this is a straight end link actually as i see it now it's straight um so it's this one it's interesting okay this one's curved maybe that's why there's a little bit of a price difference but still most people want the curved um, the Speedy actually looks fantastic on a straight on a straight end link, uh, but personally, I wanted the curved. The curved looks closer to the astronaut mesh. Let's go down here and look at the mesh. The see the curved one is more of the astronaut mesh one. Um, if I just go up into Google right now and do JB Champion NASA mesh we can go on to images and you will see the images and they have the curved end link there this guy has a picture that's more of a straight but yeah the, the astronauts they used the curved end link so that's what you want to look for it's the same as mine but again you know mine's not the mesh the mesh is very expensive i was watching a bid that an auction for one this is you know obviously not the pr proper one it's got a more modern uh, clasp here on the back. This is the older one. People buy these for their 321s. They buy them for their 321s. Ooh, here's mine with the straight on a speedy. Um, but yeah, that's the history of them. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos on horology. And you know, you could have been watching any other videos online right now, but you're here with me and I appreciate that. So. Thanks again and hopefully I'll see you next time.